Welcome everybody to this live demonstration of Cuma. Today I'm very excited to be presenting to you this session because we're going to be seeing the results of many months of work with the community and with our users into building the best multi-cluster and multi-cloud support that any service mesh has ever seen. My name is Marco Palladino and I am the CTO and co-founder of Kong. And, and Kong really was the organization that first created Cuma and then decided to donate Cuma to the CNCF Foundation, today available as a sandbox project, which means that Cuma can be used with the same openness, the same neutrality, the same governance as any other CNCF project. When we first looked at creating a service mesh integration for our enterprise customers at Kong, we didn't want to build Cuma. We really wanted to leverage existing service meshes out there that were available in the industry so that we could package those service meshes into a, a solution that we could ship to our users. And, uh, and none of the service meshes out there worked for us. And, and let me tell you why. We wanted something that was easy to use, that was simple to deploy, simple to scale. But for many users, service mesh has been a very complicated technology to deploy and to use at scale in production. We needed something that would support not just Kubernetes deployments, but could also support virtual machines or support other containerized environments that were not Kubernetes. For example, AWS Fargate or ECS. And, um, and none of the service meshes out there allowed us to do that. We needed something that would allow us to support multiple uh, zones in a distributed service mesh across multiple clouds, multiple clusters, across a hybrid of VMs and Kubernetes, and no service mesh was allowing us to do that. So we decided to build Cuma. We built Cuma and we have donated Cuma, making it the first Envoy-based service mesh to ever be donated and accepted into, into the foundation. Cuma, it is built on top of Envoy. We're strong believers of Envoy as a networking technology for our data plane proxies. And because of the very unique set of features that Cuma has built over the past years, we are looking at an incredible growth in the community when it comes to community adoption, as well as mission critical enterprise adoption in mission critical use cases where Cuma, it is being used today to support a service mesh for the entire organization. Cuma, it is something that has been designed for the enterprise architect. We want to make sure that as the application teams are building more and more services, more and more applications, they do not manage the network. That comes as part of the infrastructure. And so today, Cuma, it is being used by central teams, architecture teams to provide under the, uh, under the hood connectivity via a service mesh across any environment, any cloud, any architecture that the application teams are using for their applications. So Cuma primarily has been used for, you know, for many different use cases, but we can sum them up in the following ones. So Cuma has been used to enable service connectivity across all the services that we're building to discover the services and make sure that the traffic among them is reliable. It is being used for one click zero trust security model enablement in order to be able to create security um, uh, enhanced security across all the workloads, as well as being able to rotate the data plane proxy certificates in an automated way. And then, of course, the more services we have, the more traffic we have, the bigger is the requirement for strong observability. And so Cume is being used today to capture those traces, those logs, those metrics, and, and either visualize them on Zipkin or Jaeger or Splunk or Logstash or via the out-of-the-box dashboards uh, on Grafana that the project provides. And from a 10,000 feet standpoint, Cuma is a control plane that implements the XDS API. It can run on Kubernetes and VMs. It can run in a single and multi-zone capacity. It is built for the enterprise architect that must support the entire organization. And because it's part of CNCF, it is a vendor neutral technology. Cuma provides a very unique set of features uh, that we've built because we couldn't find them elsewhere. And so Cuma supports a multiple, multiple virtual meshes, multi-tenancy, for each team or each application that we want to support in order to reduce the team coordination as well as improve the compartmentalization of our service meshes. So we can deploy Cuma once and create as many meshes as we want, as opposed, as opposed to creating one service mesh per application or per team. 
it is universal. It runs on Kubernetes in VMs. It supports custom attributes that we can use for our policies. For example, to keep traffic within a country. And it supports the best built-in multi-zone connectivity that we're going to be seeing, seeing live in a demo today. When it comes to service mesh in general, service mesh is important because it centralizes how we manage connectivity, which is going to be one of the most important things we need to manage as we get more distributed and more decoupled. But it also makes the application teams more efficient because they don't have to reinvent and rebuild all the things that the service mesh provides. Uh, as well as it's built on top of Envoy, and we are strong believers of Envoy, like I said, we can leverage all the Envoy functionality inside of Kuma. We can implement Zero Trust security in one click by uh, using the mutual TLS and traffic permission policies that Kuma offers out of the box. As well as, like I said, we can integrate Kuma with any sorts of observability tooling we may be using today, as well as using what Kuma provides out of the box. Now, of course, as one of the biggest reasons for using a service mesh, it's also to make sure we can implement blue-green deployments and canary releases and you know, traffic shifting across different data centers. And Kuma can do it, can do all of it with, with the routing capabilities that it provides. And in the demo today, we're going to be seeing it live across multiple clouds, multiple regions, across VMs and containers simultaneously. When it comes to uh, deploying Kuma, there is two different ways we can run the project. We can run it in a single zone or standalone mode, or we can run it in a multi-zone mode. Multi-zone, really, it is what makes Kuma very um, interesting uh, in, in an enterprise organization. So when running a, a service mesh across multiple zones, multiple platforms, multiple clouds, multiple clusters, there is two main challenges we have to solve. Propagating the service mesh policies across each zone, as well as enabling cross-zone connectivity uh, from one zone to another. And Kuma automates both of these problems by providing a global control plane and remote control plane separation to automatically synchronize the policies. Uh, the global control plane is the entry point for setting all the service mesh resources, and those resources will be automatically propagated to the remote ones. Whereas we're going to be using the built-in service discovery and the Kuma ingress that comes out of the box to enable cross-zone connectivity from one zone to another. Even if one zone is VMs and another zone is Kubernetes, or one zone is in one cloud, one region, and another zone is a physical data center. Kuma makes no assumptions as to where we're running the service mesh with the goal of supporting every workload in the organization. And of course, it provides a GUI out of the box. It provides a CLI out of the box, an API out of the box. And, uh, and I'm very excited about all the things that we're building when it comes to improving how the users are interacting with the service mesh. In Kuma, we deploy a service mesh, and then we can apply policies on top of our workloads, policies like traffic route, mutual TLS, permissions, health check, secret breakers, and so on and so forth. Um, as well as Kuma, it is being used today to accelerate the transition to Kubernetes by uh, allowing to support simultaneously virtual machine-based zones with Kubernetes zones, and then determining with the traffic routing rules how much traffic should go to the VM-based ver version of a service as opposed to the container-based version of a service. Um, including uh, environments like AWS, Fargate, as well as ECS, which typically other service meshes do not support. And this is a function of the, uni the, the universality that we've built inside of the project. And of course, uh, it integrates with existing gateway technologies. Uh, for example, at the edge, at the edge, you know, service mesh is not applicable if we want to enable our APIs to be consumed by a client that we do not, that's outside of the organization because we cannot force a sidecar deployment to them and we don't want their sidecar to talk to our control plane. And so we can integrate with gateways, which can become the ingress and the egress of the service mesh. And we have that not native full stack end to end integration built in into the product. And so in the product, you can see gateway data planes that can be assigned in order to either support the edge requirements with an ecosystem of partners or mobile apps, as well as inside of the organization to enable different teams to talk to each other via an abstraction layer provided by a gateway. So let's not spend any more time talking about all the, the things that Kuma can do, but let's watch them live in production. So I'm going to be pulling up my um, infrastructure right now so I can show you uh, what, what Kuma can do. So first and foremost, uh, I am running Kuma right now in a multi-zone deployment that spans across both EC2 on virtual machines as well as Kubernetes clusters on GCP, on GKE. So we're going to be seeing here that on GKE, we have Kuma East, 
to my west. These are my east and west uh, zones on GKE, as well as there is a global zone for our global control plane. And then we do also have the remote control plane and the ingress being deployed as a virtual machine on EC2. Now, in order to show you this demo, uh, I've built a very simple application that basically integrates, uh, shows a, a front end that allows us to increment a counter on Redis. And so uh, I was loading my applications from EC2. And um, as you can see, if I press the increment button, it will increment a counter in a, in a specific zone. And so this is the zone where Redis lives. And so different Redis instances in different zones may end up having different counters, depending on how often we increment that counter. Um, you know, I can generate some traffic here if I want, but most importantly, let's go to the global control plane and see uh, what we have running live into our mesh. So first and foremost, if we explore the namespaces that we have running, we see that there is a Kuma system namespace. And if I look into the, um, into the pods of this Kuma system namespace, uh, we see that there is one Kuma control plane uh, pod uh, and a service really that we can then access. So I'm going to be port forwarding the Kuma control plane service from the Kuma system namespace so we can access it. Now the GUI that I'm going to be showing you, it is built on top of the same RESTful API that you can integrate with your own automation. So this is this is the RESTful API. You know, if I go on slash meshes, I can explore the meshes and, and I can see the resources of the mesh. But if I go on slash GUI, I can see the GUI that's being presented to me uh, and it's built on top of the API I just showed you. So this GUI right now is showing us all the resources that we have in the mesh. So we have two different zones. One it's on AWS on virtual machines. Another one it's on Kubernetes East. Another one it's on Kubernetes West. And then we have a series of data planes that we have running um, where we can see that there is a Redis running on AWS, the one that I've just showed you, as well there is a demo app running on AWS on virtual machines. But we also have the demo app running on GKE East and we have uh, Redis running on GKE East and West and so on. We also have the three ingresses that allow us to enable cross zone communication uh, out of the box. And we have one for each zone, for AWS, for GK East, and for GK West. You know, when it comes to QM itself, we can go on QMA.io, we can go on slash install, and we can see all the different installation methods that we're supporting. Uh, we are about to release QMA 1.0, and we're also going to be introducing support for Windows, which is now being released in an alpha version in Envoy Proxy. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, and start using the mesh. So right now the mesh is not really doing anything. Uh, besides having one virtual mesh called the default, everything is being disabled. There is no resources. Uh, all I have is the data planes being registered to it, but there is nothing really going on here. So let's go ahead and make this uh, service mesh a little bit more interesting. So let's, for example, enable zero trust security by implementing the enabling the mutual TLS policy. When it comes to mutual TLS, there is different certificate authorities that we can choose. We can choose the built-in certificate authority that will automatically generate a CA for us. We can provide our own root certificate and key. Um, and in order to apply these resources, uh, it is very simple. Uh, we can use on Kubernetes, we can use kubectl to effectively uh, update our default mesh to enable mutual TLS with um, a built-in backend that does a certificate rotation for our data plane proxies every day. But if you were to be running this on virtual machines, we could use a very similar YAML declarative config, but instead of kubectl, we would be using kubectl. So this is truly a universal service mesh that can support all kinds of environments. Uh, but because we're running on Kubernetes, uh, I'm going to be uh, using this policy to change the state of my mesh. So if I go back to my, um, if I go to my editor, I am going to be running the command that we're going to be executing to that we're going to be executing to um, uh, change the state of our default mesh by enabling mutual TLS. And if I do this, mutual TLS will be now enabled for every service in this mesh. And by default, without having uh, a traffic permission, which is another policy we need to add, without having this our traffic will stop working and I'll show you this. So if I go here and I open a new terminal and I apply, I apply my uh, uh, resource on uh, Kubernetes on the global control plane, 
we can see that the traffic will stop working. And that is because we have enabled zero trust security and we must have an explicit traffic permission to determine what services can consume other services. And so the traffic permission is a, another resource that Puma provides and it allows us to determine what source of traffic can consume what destination. As you can see here, we can use attributes that are being associated to every workload in Kuma. And these attributes are attributes that we can uh, customize. Uh, some of them are also being auto-generated, but we can find them from the GUI or from the CLI or the API, and we can see them here. So anyways, by enabling uh, every service to consume every other service, we are effectively re-enabling all the traffic to flow again. Now, by default, whenever we re-enable this traffic, the traffic will go and flow across every zone that we support, which means the Kubernetes zones as well as the Amazon zone. We can limit that and change that behavior by using a traffic routing rule. But if I do this now, we can see that not only the traffic is being resumed, but the traffic is also going to be flowing from one zone to another. What you are looking at right now, it's a multi-zone deployment running on multiple Kubernetes clusters, running on, on virtual machines, on different clouds, in different world regions, with zero trust security enabled, with traffic permission ACL enabled, and the traffic is flowing from one zone to another out of the box, automatically discovered, automatically secured. Of course, the counter is going to be different depending on what Redis instance in what in, in you know where we're hitting. In, in, uh, in the specific zone that's being visualized down here. But now let's say that we want to change this. We want to force traffic to go to specific uh, zones. That would be very easy to do by using the traffic routing policy, which allows us to determine how we want the traffic to flow from, from one zone to another. And, and so I'm going to be pulling up my editor again, and we can uh, determine, for example, that we can use the attributes again. So uh, we can say that I want all traffic from this service generated by this service going to this other service. So all the traffic generated by the demo app going to Redis to go, you know, all of it, all of it to go to Redis in a specific zone. So let's say that we want this zone to be, all, we want all the traffic to go to GKE East, for example. So we can create this traffic routing rule we can we can apply it on Kubernetes, but I'm going to be doing this next to my app so we can see what happens. I'm now applying, like I've done before, I'm applying this resource on the global control plane. The global control plane is now automatically synchronizing this resource across all the remotes so that we can put this uh, new effect, new, new uh, change into effect. And so if I do this, we can see how the traffic is now gonna be forced into GKE East. But let's say that I want a little bit of Amazon, a little bit of GCP. That's great. Um, I can I can go back to my I can go back to my configuration. I can add another. Um, I can split the weight um, in the following way, and uh, I can say that uh, a little bit of traffic goes on AWS and a little bit of traffic goes on GCP. So right now we can see that uh, approximately half of it will go on AWS and half of it will go on GKE East. I can update my resource. We can pull up our application again. And if I do this, uh, we're going to be seeing the traffic going a little bit on VMs, a little bit on containers, a little bit on one cloud, a little bit on another cloud. It's that easy to run a distributed multi-cloud, multi-cluster service mesh with Kuma. Now, um, you know, obviously this is a very simple demo that demonstrates zero trust security, demonstrates tra traffic permissions, but there's a lot more to it. And uh, you can explore the policies that we have here, as well as you can use any filter that Envoy provides with the proxy template policy, as well as you can see the metrics, the traces, and so on and so forth. Now, this is how easy it is to use the project. As, uh, as one of the most important announcements that I would like to make, we have released we have released Kuma 1.0, which brings so much more in performance improvements and improvements in this multi-zone deployment to, to the project. And this is available on the website today uh, on Kuma.io. You can download and use it and, and push it in production live. So we have seen today what Kuma is, what Kuma can do, why Kuma is very different from other service meshes, how simple it is to run, 
how distributed it can be in a multi-zone capacity. And we've seen a live demo of probably one of the most complex service mesh deployments anybody could run, multi-cloud, multi-cluster, hybrid VMs and containers. So thank you so much. You can check out Qum at qma.io slash install, and you can chat with the community on Slack by going on qma.io slash community. So thank you so much, and I hope you have enjoyed this talk.